Hello, uh, today I want to show you uh, Creole and Astaric uh, Fine Element Analysis Model um, applied uh, to one of our products we have been designing. Uh, here we have a manhole cover uh, with a grid inside, and uh, the grid is um, normally welded uh, from you know, steel beams, so we treat it uh, as one single part. And then we have uh, you know, the outside. Uh, body also, you know, from steel and you know, small supports, uh, you know, from strong sheet metal, they are welded uh, as well to carry the load. Uh, the load is uh, rather big; uh, it's 90 tons, metric tons, which is like 90,000 kilograms, and um, it's intended that um, a heavy truck can stand on with one wheel uh, on the manhole, and we will check, you know, the deformation. And if it, it will hold, you now we will not go into dynamic uh, load, uh, but only we will check it statically, as if the truck is uh, standing and with one wheel uh, on this cover. For this, uh, I've taken a work plane and um, I've just uh, you know imprinted a circular edge on the cover to get a circular uh, you know flat face, uh, where I will apply the 90,000 uh, kilo load. You know, as um, you see here, uh, this is our uh, this is the face, and outside, you know, we have uh, the cover, and the the cover is in, in our in the first uh, you know test version, uh, just uh, standing on the grid. I show you the load, and you know, I already applied material which is uh, regular steel. I already applied load to the circular face. And I also applied uh, constraints, uh, as you see here on the sides, that the uh, manhole cover is just, you know, uh, sitting uh, with those uh, faces, with the bottom face, uh, you know, in a, uh, whereas the side faces are free to move, there are no, no constraints on the side faces. Uh, you know, in uh, Creolmas Direct, uh, of course, uh, you know, you can apply and you know all the loads and all the constraints and then i've done you know uh, the uh, first um you know uh, analysis and this is the result each analyze uh, takes took me approximately 10 minutes and now i am just uh, showing you and uh, you know the result by animation and uh, the first result is important uh, for us to check uh, the problem areas and as you see uh, while the load is on the cover um you know the the small supports for the beams are actually moving the side face inwards uh you see the side face is moving uh, really uh you know inwards and uh, but they're not breaking because they are you know strong because they are small and welded so they the whole side face is moved together with the supports inwards you know and uh, of course, the uh, the result is uh, the graphic result result at this moment is magnified. It doesn't show you the real value. Uh, to get the real value, uh, we have to go to the uh, deformation factor, the uh, magnification factor. We should set to one. And if I update now the model, uh, the result model, then this is the the real value of the you know the formation one to one and not scaled and now we do the you know here you don't see actually as much as we saw last time uh, the problem area that's why it's a good you know a way first to use a high a magnification factor to see the problem areas and later go back to the real value of a non scale deformation which is one in this case to see the you know real value Still, the side was moving, you know, but uh, of course not as much as uh, it was the result was magnified. So we can inquire uh, the result, uh, the best the displacement of one point. So when I look at the displacement, I see 3.4 millimeters. Uh, this wall, this wall is moving, you know, inwards, you know, um, to the uh, to the, to the side walls. And which might maybe uh, not be too much, but still, uh, in the middle we got a deformation of uh, displacement of you know um, almost seven millimeters, 
and maybe this is a little bit too big and um, you know I check now again uh, animate the real uh, with factor one the result of the you know uh, analysis and I see that everything looks okay but I assume that here in the corners maybe uh, it is moving I, I assume that they have some problems so I go back and change the deformation factor uh, magnify it by 10 so now everything will be magnified by 10 and as you see uh, what I assumed was correct uh, once we you know uh, magnify it by 10 uh, we see more detail I will just animate it now and then uh, you see that the sides of the cover is moving up uh, but in real life um, like I said this is magnified now by 10 in real life this value is not so much so I can ignore it and this is not a, a issue at the moment all right uh, maybe in the next step uh, we should make some changes uh, to the design and I assume um, that maybe if I make um, you know the the cover a little bit larger you know maybe I can avoid the, the wall moving uh, so much outside and to make the wall a little bit larger uh, we can simply do it let me first uh, switch off the result so I get the model back and I say if my cover is not sitting on the grid and if I make it larger to the sides then I take uh, some part of the load uh, from the grid to the sides of the, the blue part uh, you know which is the like the housing so I pull the sides of the cover you know and for a better load distribution so I simply change the my model okay on four sides and the cover will be bigger and now the load uh, will not you know 100% go directly to the grid but uh, the distribution of the load will be changed uh, some part of the load will go uh, to the outside housing part the, the blue one and some part of the load will go then uh, to the grid so I assume that this will bring us benefits uh, because uh, we have split it the load distribution uh, to two parts uh, the grid will be uh, under less load okay uh, but don't forget that each time I start um, you know analyze takes me 10 minutes now I make a stop and I come back with the next result all right so this is the result it took me 10 minutes and now you know it is once it's finished I'm now checking it again uh, again, you know, we see the walls are moving, and again, I see the formation in the middle. You know, but uh, what is the factor? Uh, first of all, let me see, inquire uh, directly, uh, give a reference point, and check. So now we got 2.5. We already get less deformation on the side walls, uh, like uh, last time, and uh, when we check uh, in the middle. You know, remember that we had uh, seven millimeters. So at this point, now I got uh, 7.1, and here I got 7.6.6. .6. So it also didn't bring too much. Uh, my assumption that uh, you know, shifting the uh, load distribution uh, from the grid uh, to the sides of the uh, blue cover uh, didn't bring too much. I check. I changed the uh, magnification factor to one again. So we got a one-to-one -one in a real life uh, result okay and now we see the result in real life okay and we can also now check um, you know let me see take the loads back All right and this is the real life result it's not too much uh, but still uh, seven millimeters is uh, maybe for me a little bit uh, too much I want to see what happens with those supports I want to see animate now see the walls are still moving you know away uh, from just under the load another idea uh, now I am considering is uh, what would happen 
what will happen how can i do it uh, better uh, remember i told you that when you look to the result in magnified view then you see the problem areas remember that when the magnified view was you know but big uh, then i saw that the side uh, walls were moving away so maybe a good idea would be I can support uh, with some walls like from beton, you know, it's a manhole and the side walls. It means that if the manhole is exactly uh, in this, you know, uh, supporting the side walls in this area, then the side walls cannot move. So I will put here some uh, constraints. I say here, you know, I put, I fix this face and I fix this face. No, I fix this face. You can think of, of it like putting the manhole cover into the hole and screwing it to the side walls, to the beton. Then they cannot uh, move at all to the concrete, you know. And uh, in this case, you know, like uh, we have now uh, another low uh, constraint. Those side faces are uh, now uh, fixed. They cannot move. They are bolted uh, to the concrete, um, you know, walls of the manhole. Okay, now I assume that uh, we will get a better results. Side walls will not move and the supports will not move. Uh, but my concern is that maybe supports will break, you know, under the load because they cannot move now. They have to take complete stress. And um, of course, I can't check now. It's too late because my result is uh, not more valid anymore. As soon as you add, uh, make some changes, you see result as a cross. It means that we can't we can't check it now. We have to, of course, we have to do now re new recalculation uh, of the analysis, and um, after the result, you know, we can check what happens. So I'm starting a new calculation, which will take another 10 minutes, and I'll be back when the result is ready. This is our third, uh, you know, analysis, and now we we fix the side walls to the concrete. They are bolted. They won't move, and I'm just checking now the formation factor in this case 14. So this view is 14 times magnified, okay. And uh, so I go to the uh, you know, let's check the animation. Now to see the 14 times magnification, uh, how it looks like. It's a good practice that uh, first you check the animation with a high magnification factor. And which, which gives you an idea, you know, uh, which, uh, which problems may occur or which parts of the model has problems. So I see here, uh, you know, concentrated stress, the colors are changing, but the side wall, uh, because it's, it's bolted to the concrete, uh, you know, it's not moving at all. See, so side walls are now staying still and uh, the supports are, you know, not shifting, not moving the side walls uh, you know, towards outside. Okay, and but now let's check the supports if they will break or if they will move. You know, so I don't see any high, you know, deformation uh, of the supports, which means that uh, they are okay. They won't, you know, bend under the uh, workload, and the, the deformation displacement is 0 0.055. It's a great value. You know, it's like. And not even one tenth of the millimeter, and they are deformed. You know, so if my material is hard enough, you now I will get almost no deformation, uh, no displacement on the for the supports, uh, which means that by bolting uh, the side walls to the concrete, I achieved uh, you know very little deformation on the sides. And when I check now uh, the problem area, which is in the middle. All of a sudden, I get now 3.4, which is uh, the half of the deformation I got before. So, as you see, by keeping the same uh, model, but just changing the assembly, uh, the assembling instructions that the side walls uh, will be bolted to the concrete sides, I automatically got, uh, you know, a, a half of the deformation under the same load. Okay, so uh, I think now I changed the uh, real life factor to one and update it. And now I get the, uh, I can see uh, now the uh, deformation in real life, how it will look like you know, with the non scaled value of one. 
Again, let's make animation again. So the stress is changing, you know, but there is almost no deformation. 3.5 millimeter, the whole thing will move down. Okay, and let me check a few more points to make sure. Yeah, 3.4, 3.4. Yeah. So actually, I think I'm happy with this result. Now uh, I can keep it. And um, I want to make sure that the, the sides are now bolted to the concrete. Everything will be okay. Thank you.